Welcome to Power Coat Music. In today's presentation, we're going to talk about the Tascam DP24 Digital Portis Studios flaws and fixes. If you own a Tascam DP24 or DP32 unit, or you're thinking about buying one, you shouldn't miss a minute of this video. Grab your coffee, your tea, sit back and relax. We're going to analyze the unit's known flaws and explore the fixes in detail, as well as discuss the new product features that were released for the unit over the years. Just about every digital multi-track recorder in production these days has flaws and the Tascam DP series is no exception to the rule. The good news is that hardware digital multi-track recorders are much easier to maintain with less frequency than that of software digital audio workstations or DAWs. Thank God for that. Now with this, Tascam has been very consistent during the life of this product to release updates and address and correct most issues. For instance, Tascam makes available a tested media list for the Digital Portis Studio 24 and 32 units. Now only use the SD card media from this list to avoid any issues with your unit. If you don't, you do so at your own risk. Now to find this list, just Google Tascam DP24 tested media list to view or download it. In addition, there are also significant workarounds for two of the most popular flaws that plague the second generation digital Porta Studio SD units. The first generation Tascam DP24 and DP32 models have built-in MIDI in and out ports as well as a CD burner. The second generation DP24 SD and DP32 SD models do not have these features. For a workaround regarding the lack of MIDI ports on the SD units, watch my video Tascam DP24 DP32 SD Digital Porta Studio Sync to MIDI no hardware required on this channel. Secondly, I think most of you have realized by now you don't need a CD burner on the SD models because you can connect them to your PC via USB to achieve the same result. And you can also do this on the first generation MIDI units. Now here's a point of note. The firmware or the software that runs the first generation SD models and the second generation SD model DP units are not the same. This means that the bugs and the software updates for the first gen units and the second gen units are different. With this, you must be careful to install the correct version update on the digital port Portis Studio hardware that it was designed for. But keep in mind that if you have a first generation unit, uh, the firmware for the DB24 for the first generation MIDI units will be the same firmware that works on the DP32 MIDI units. Again, if you have a second generation unit, the software that works on the DP24 SD is the same firmware software that will work on the DP32 SD. Since you've purchased your unit, if you have not updated to the latest firmware version or even checked to see what that is, you may be doing yourself a major disservice. How, you might think to yourself? Well, this is because previous firmware versions not only have negative technical effects on your recordings, that is your music, they also don't include newer features that significantly improve your sessions, recordings, and productions. Let's take a look at the Tascam DP24 and DP32 first generation MIDI model fixes and updates. This information is categorized or separated, I should say, into two different areas on your screen. The first is new functions and the second is maintenance items. We're going to start with the new functions with the first version 1.10 edition area. With this, you can see for this unit, 24-bit songs can now be recorded using CDA discs. 
and also 48 KHC songs can now be used to write to CDA discs. And you can see all the criteria with that. Now moving on, a peak meter hold function was also added. And a track, you know, editing in subframe units, um, that ability is also added as well. Now this model can also read songs created by a DP32. Now we're referring to a DP24, which previously could not do that. DP32s could read DP24 songs, but the reverse was not possible until this version update. With this, let's now move on to the maintenance items section. And the first item under the maintenance items is the latest change as of this date, which is version 1.15 changes. And the first is in auto punch mode, recording sometimes started before the endpoint. This has been fixed. <laughs> that could be annoying and a brief noise sometimes occurred after editing and that's been fixed. Now, if you go down the version 1.15 changes, you'll see that this mainly deals with noise updates. So after this particular maintenance change, you have a much quieter unit. Let's now move on to the version 1.14 changes. MIDI time code would be input one frame late in some cases, this has been fixed. If you were syncing to MIDI, like a drum machine or a sequencer, that could really throw your timing off, especially if you have a longer song. So that was updated. Moving on to version 1.12 changes. When using the live writer function, CDs were not created properly sometimes. This has been fixed. On the track editing screen, the subframe uh, positions of in, out, and to, your location uh, functionality, were not displayed correctly. <laughs> For me, that would have been a big issue over time. That was fixed. Let's move down to version 1.11 changes. Under the following conditions, the input track and equal out, equalizer settings would be initialized. This has been fixed. Now, this would happen when you were doing things like saving from the home screen, shutting down the unit, when switching to mix down mode, when making USB connections, things like that. That could be very annoying over time. That has been fixed. Also with certain equalizer settings, the frequency display could become abnormal to the mixer screen. Uh, that was taken care of. And after deleting virtual tracks from a stereo track using the undo function, it wouldn't restore the state before the item was deleted. And of course that was fixed. With this, let's move on to version 1.10 changes. Accurate measurement was not possible when you tried to use the tuner function with a song uh, with a 48 KHC sampling rate that was loaded. That's fixed. If you stop recording immediately after punching in, the unit would freeze. Ugh. <laughs> These are, again, earlier updates. That was fixed. And of course, that affected the operation uh, of the uh, stability, which was improved overall. And the first update, or should I say change, version change was 1.02. And this was pretty significant because some WAV file formats weren't recognized. That's been fixed. I mean, this unit reads WAV files, so it's a big deal. When MMC mode was set to slave, MMC record commands were not always received. Uh, that was taken care of. And when the MIDI generator was set to MDC, synchronization was sometimes lost. The stability of MTC generator output was improved. So you can see a lot of MIDI updates. We have CD writer updates, um, some mix down and mastering updates, uh, corrections to waveforms, uh, EQ uh, issues were fixed, mixer issues were fixed. So as you can see, having the latest version update on your DP model is a big deal. In addition, write timeout and read timeout and other messages sometimes appear. If the unit's operation becomes slow, the number of song edits or total file number may become too large. If this happens, try exporting every track and then importing them back into a new song and then working with that new song to resolve the issues. For details on how to do this, watch my video, Tascam DP24 DP32 Digital Portis Studio, importing and exporting tracks on this channel. After you export and then import the tracks in the song that you're having problems with, create a new song and then set the bit rate and the sampling frequency of the new song to the same values of the original song. 
open the new song and then import every exported file to separate tracks in the new song. Once you complete this, continue with the new song as opposed to the old one and hopefully this will resolve your issues. Now let's talk about the Tascam DP24 SD and the DP32 SD second generation models fixes and updates. Now the second generation models have a bit of a head start on the first generation models when it comes to bugs so we're looking here primarily at maintenance item updates. We're going to start with the latest uh, changes and move down to some of the earlier changes to kind of see the progression of some of the things that were fixed. So the latest was version 1.07, which after completing mastering, readout timeout pop-up message could not be closed. I got that message uh, on my older unit, and that was a pain uh, once, so we got that fixed. Uh, version 1.06, manual punch in and out transport operations would become slow, and that was improved. Read timeout pop-up uh, was shown when an SD card couldn't be read fast enough. Of course, fixed. Uh, moving down to 1.05 changes. Now it shows sometimes a file error on display during recording and the recording ends in failure. That was fixed. 1.04 changes um, and version 1.03 changes. They just basically worked here to fix the stability of the unit, make it more reliable. Moving down to version 1.02 changes. Now when specific equalizer settings were made, the stereo level meters would would move even when there was no sound. Not cool, that was fixed. On rare occasions, noise would occur. Um, again, this affects your recording sessions and your productions. This is a big deal, fixed. And of course, the first change for the SD uh, models was the version 1.01 changes. Now when files created on different devices were imported, noise would sometimes occur, that was fixed. Noise problem again during playback. Um, when set to the bar display, editing would sometimes result in a beat becoming inaccurate. Not cool. That was fixed. You would get insufficient space errors and again, some stability problems with the unit that were improved. So we talked about it before. We will reiterate it one more time. Now you can start to see how important it is to have the latest version model update on your SD unit. First, we'll go through exactly how to check the current firmware version on your Digital Porta Studio and the exact steps for updating it if needed. The process is exactly the same, that is, updating the firmware for both the first generation MIDI models and the second generation SD models. First, we're going to check the firmware version. Check the Tascam.com website for the latest firmware version for the product model you have. Next, we'll check the unit's installed firmware version. Press the menu button to open the menu screen and use the jog data dial or cursor buttons to select the information menu. Press the F4 button to open the information screen. If the system version is the same as the latest version from the Tascam.com website, then you don't need to update your system's firmware. Let's talk more about updating the firmware. It's suggested that you check the Tascam.com website for updates in the download section for the model that you own at least once a year. Now this is very important. If you're uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form about updating the firmware for your unit, then I strongly suggest that you take it to an authorized Tascam dealer or repair shop for assistance. The process usually takes around five minutes or more, and they may even provide the service to you for free. So if you record a lot with your unit, this is well worth your time. Other than that, Download the most recent version of the firmware from Tascam.com and if the file is downloaded in a compressed format such as zip, uncompress the file. Use a USB cable to connect your DP unit to your PC. Press the menu button to open the menu screen and use the jog data dial or cursor buttons to select the USB menu. Press the F4 button to open the USB screen. 
press the F2 or Yes button to connect your DP unit with your PC via USB. The unit should now be recognized by your PC as an external drive or storage device. Now copy the downloaded firmware from your PC to the DP24 or 32's utility folder. After the file has been copied, press the F2 or Yes button to end the USB connection with your PC. The home screen will now appear on the DP unit. Now turn off the power to the DP unit. Now this part is important. While pressing and holding both the mute and undo redo buttons on the front of the DP unit, turn the power back on. This starts the unit in update mode and now the file that will be used for the update will be shown on the DP screen. If this does not work the first time, then repeat the process. If no update file is in the unit's utility folder, the message no update file will appear. Now here's a point of note. When firmware has been copied to the DP's utility folder from a Mac, in addition to the firmware file, another file with an underscore added to the beginning of the firmware name will also be shown. This is important. Use the file without the underscore at the beginning of the name. Let's move on. Use the jog data dial to select the firmware and press the F4 button. The current version appears on the left and the updated version appears on the right. Press the F2 or Yes button to begin the update process. When the update process is done, the word complete appears on the screen and the unit's power will turn off automatically. Don't be alarmed, just turn the power on again. Repeat the checking the firmware version process that was described previously to confirm that the system version is indeed the latest firmware. If this is the case, you're done. Now, connect your PC via USB as described previously and delete the firmware update from your DP's utility folder. For more information on firmware updates for other gear in your home studio, watch my video Free Studio Gear Upgrades on this channel. Well, my friends, that's a wrap. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen to join our group. We have new videos coming out every seven to 10 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this video and check us out on Facebook Instagram and Spotify. While you're here, listen to some of the other music on the channel and check out some of the other videos and playlists. Lots of great information there. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.